Hi, and welcome to another video on weather radar. In this video, this is the second half of radar components. We're going to finish up talking about the different parts of radar. And we have already covered master clock, modulator, transmitter, waveguide, and duplexer. We're working our way into the antenna now. And what an antenna is, an antenna is a transducer. And it takes uh, the electric signal that's coming out of the transmitter and uh, sends it uh, on its way through the medium. It acts as the interface between the, the hardware, what we call the radar, and the medium that's covering or carrying the electromagnetic signal, which is our atmosphere. So the uh, radar or the antenna is actually two parts. It's the parabolic dish or the what we call the reflector and then also a device that emits radiation. And that's what we call the antenna. So of course the reflector is typically parabolic because that focuses the energy the best uh, or the signal the best. And it also can be pointed in any direction um, so that it sends the signal out in whatever direction, whatever elevation angle and whatever azimuth you want. And um, it generally, of course, focuses the uh, energy uh, in a particular direction. And I can uh, show you that uh, in the next two slides. Um, here we see the parabolic reflector and also the antenna. So in fact, what happens is the antenna, the, the thing that transmits the um, signal, is actually uh, sending the signal backwards into the dish or into the reflector. The reflector focuses the uh, signal and sends it out in a very narrow beam in a particular direction. So this is what it would look like without a re reflector if you used, uh, for example, a candle here is emitting, of course, visible light. And that square or that rectangle out in the distance represents the amount of power over a given um, area, surface area as the light travels and the radiation travels away from uh, the candle. Now, if we're able to use a reflector to focus that, it would look something like this. The reflector here is a parabolic uh, dish and uh, the light is focused so that you have more power per surface area. And that's what we want with radar. We want to illuminate uh, a, a particular region with uh, a lot of power. So there are some rules or some uh, guidelines for reflectors and antenna. For a given wavelength, big antennas tend to focus the beam smaller. So whenever you can, you try and use the biggest uh, reflector or antenna dish that you can. And another rule of thumb is that for very small wavelengths, you don't need a big antenna. You can use a smaller antenna for a same size beam. So that's why airborne weather radars use X-Ban. X-Ban, remember we said, is a three centimeter radar. And that means that it's a small wavelength and you need smaller dishes than you would at longer wavelengths. So of course, uh, the um, beam width is determined by the antenna size. Larger antennas or larger dishes means smaller beam widths. Here's an example. We'll start out X-band. Uh, we've got a 12 inch ditch, dish which is a rather small dish for a uh, weather radar on an airplane. It gives you an 8 degree beam. That's a rather wide beam. The National Weather Service radars and also UND's radar uses a one degree beam so we get very good resolution. In this case an eight degree beam means that it's spreading the power and the signal over a greater area and you're averaging over a greater area. Going with a larger uh, antenna or dish you're getting uh, a smaller uh, beam. Going with uh, 14 inches you get 7.3 degrees and then if you increase it to 18 inches, that gets it down to a 6 degree beam. So here's uh, antenna size uh, in inches. These are diameters, uh, the diameter of the dish. 
and for different bands, of course, most weather radars use X-band, but there are some C-band uh, airborne weather radars out there. And uh, talking about uh, a large aircraft with a large nose cone, uh, typically they use a 30-inch, and you can see that that gets it down to a 3-degree beam for an X-band or for a uh, C-band 5-degree beam. And you can see that um, the bigger the or longer the wavelength, the bigger the uh, beam for a particular dish. Okay, a little bit about receivers now. Receivers have to be very sensitive to pick up the very weak power that's coming back to the radar. Uh, on average or typically, you'll see uh, power coming back. That's on the order of 10 to the minus 12th watts which is very very small um, you have to remember that the power that's being transmitted by these radars is typically on the order of 10 kilowatts which is a massive amount of power and very small amount of power is coming back so uh, to handle um, those large exponents the powers of 10 typically logarithms are used and you've probably heard of the db decibels decibels are used they're actually uh, decibels are uh, log 10 times 10 uh, so uh, the power that's being returned is typically expressed in dbm where m is uh, kind of a normalized power and then finally maximum unambiguous range this is the greatest range that uh, you can receive uh, items or receive uh, information from the radar. And um, so in other words, uh, this is a result of the range is determined by the pulse repetition frequency. When a radar sends out a pulse, as soon as that pulse goes out, the receiver turns on and you're listening for the power to be returned, the signal to be returned back to the radar. And then there is a finite limit because another pulse goes out shortly thereafter. So that time between pulses is um, basically the range of the radar. If you take that time, divide it by two, and multiply it by the speed of light, that'll give you a distance. And that distance is your maximum unambiguous range. It means basically it's the range of the radar, how far out the radar can listen to. So, of course, as I mentioned, uh, maximum unambiguous range is measured by, of course, the time delay between the pulses, um, between the transmission and reception. Things that come back after uh, the second pulse is sent out um, are called second trip uh, echoes, and they appear much closer to the radar than they actually are. So, of course, uh, National Weather Service radars change their PRFs depending upon how far out they want to see. So those are the components of the radar, some information that uh, is helpful in understanding what you see on the radar scope.